A pleasant day to each and everyone. I'm Stephanie Shane S. Miranda from BSC 1-3. So for today, I'm going to discuss 8-2 theory, which is the differential association theory and the containment theory. So let's begin first with the differential association theory. Before I start to discuss this theory, let me just give you some um, short background information or a fact about this theory. So, according to the crime and criminals in contemporary and classic readings in Criminology 2nd edition by Miller 2009, um, in Criminology, the differential association theory is the most talked about of the learning theories of deviance. So, when we say deviance, it means any behavior that violates social norms. And do you know who he is? Well, I guess some of you, especially those criminology students like me, already know him. So for those who didn't know him yet, let me introduce him to you. So he is Edwin Sutherland. He was an American sociologist and criminologist. He is considered as the most influential criminologist in the 20th century. He was a sociologist of the Symbolic Interactionist School of Thought. And yes, he is the one who proposed the Differential Association Theory. Sutherland proposed the theory in 1939 and he revised it in the year 1947. As stated here in my presentation, before, the explanations for criminal behavior were varied and inconsistent. Some law professors saw that as a weakness, and because of that, those law professors published a critic that argued that criminology had not produced any scientifically backed theories for criminal activity. Then, Sutherland saw it as a call to arms and used rigorous scientific methods to develop differential association theory. In the field of criminology, this theory explained that people learn to become offenders from their environment. Through interaction with others, individuals learn the values, attitudes, techniques, and motives for criminal behavior. One good aspect of this theory is this theory applies to any type of crime and to any socioeconomic background since crime is understood to be learned behavior. The theory is also applicable to white collar, corporate, and organized crime. Differential association theory is really a game changer in the field of criminology, but it has been criticized for failing to take individual differences into account. One criticism leveled against this theory has to do with the idea that people can be independent, rational actors, and individually motivated. Furthermore, uh, this notion of one being a criminal based on their environment is problematic. It is socially sensitive as it could lead to the stereotyping of individuals who came from criminal background as likely to commit a crime themselves. And based on this prediction, opportunities could be denied to them. Again, the differential association theory focuses on how individuals learn to become criminals, but it does not concern itself with why they become criminals. So that's all for the differential association theory. Let's now move on to another theory, which is the containment theory. Do you see the picture? Do you know him? Oh, he is Walter Reckless. He is known for his theory called the containment theory. It is stated in his theory that 
juvenile delinquency commonly arises from a breakdown in moral and social forces that otherwise contain deviant behavior. So what is containment theory? Containment theory is a form of control theory that contends that a series of external social factors and internal qualities effectively insulate certain individuals from criminal involvement even when ecological variables induce others to engage in crime. Containment theory has two components to prevent criminal behavior in our society. The first component is the outer containment. It is the ability of the society, community, family, and other groups to hold persons within the bounds of accepted norms. While the inner containment is the ability of individuals to follow expected norms and to control themselves. The containment theory also focuses on the push and pull forces. A forces that can cause deviant behavior. So just like what I have said earlier, deviant behavior is any behavior that is contrary to the dominant norms of the society. Some examples of the push forces are the unhappiness with living conditions, family issues or conflicts, aggressiveness, anger, socioeconomic problems, frustration, boredom, and racism. Some examples of the pull forces can be a delinquent peers, family members, subculture, and groups. To elaborate further, I have here a sample picture for all of you to better understand the containment theory. So as we can see, it is indicated that there is a delinquency out there. The girl inside the circle represents the person who will do an act that can be resulted to a delinquency. And inside the circles, there is the pushes and pulls factors that can cause deviant behavior. We can see that the two components to prevent the criminal behavior is there. The inner circle represents the inner containment that prevents the girl by doing up because of the good self-concept or the good self-control. While the outer circle represents the outer containment that also prevents the girl to do such act. The family, school, and supervision are indicated there because they are the ones that can lead or hold the girl within the bounds of accepted norms. So, did you get it? Well, I hope you all get it. So, to sum up this theory, the containment theory claimed that a series of external social factors and internal qualities effectively prevent certain individuals from criminal involvement. So, so much for that. That's all for the containment theory. So before I end my presentation, let me just end this discussion with a quote by Paul Glover. It says, Action without theory is reckless. Theory without action is worthless. So if you want to read and explore more about the theory that I have discussed, here is my reference and you can visit those sites. So, thank you. I hope that you understand what I have discussed and I hope that all of you have learned something from me. Again, I'm Stephanie Shane Esmeranda from BSC 1-3. I hope that you are all safe at sabi nga ni Miss A, kumain tayo ng masarap. At sabi ko naman, kahit stress sa akads, always wear that smile. So thank you for watching and listening and have a wonderful day everyone. So, bye!